Hi everyone and welcome back to Fusion News. I'm Dr Hazel Lowe. I'm a plasma physicist working on fusion plasma diagnostics at Tokamak Energy in the UK. It's Friday the 27th of January 2023 and this is your Fusion News update. Stories today include 1. DOE funds projects to work on overcoming fusion energy hurdles. 2. Tokamak experiments provide unique data for validating spacecraft heat shield ablation models. 3. UK fusion firm Tokamak signed superconducting tape agreement with Furukawa. 4. Chinese East Tokamak achieves improved plasma retention. 5. Vancouver-based General Fusion achieves milestone in plan to build major UK test plant. And I also have a couple of bonus items for you at the end. 1. DOE funds projects to work on overcoming fusion energy hurdles. Encouraged by the US Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's 2022 announcement of reaching scientific breakeven in the National Ignition Facility, last week the US Department of Energy awarded $2.3 million to 10 different private public projects. In fact, 8 out of 10 of the awardees are Fusion Industry Association members. The awards come from the Innovation Network for Fusion Energy which is a Department of Energy programme that aims to accelerate delivery of fusion energy technology through public-private partnerships. Combined teams made up of private companies and Department of Energy National Laboratories will work on some of the big challenges on the road to developing viable fusion energy reactors that can produce more energy than is required to operate them. One such partnership is between the Oak Ridge National Laboratory and Fusion Industry Association member Tokamak Energy in the UK, and will investigate how to make a breeder blanket to make tritium as a product of a fusion reactor. Many of our regular viewers will know that one fuel combination that can be used to achieve fusion reactions in a plasma a fusion device is deuterium and tritium. These are both isotopes of hydrogen, meaning that they have one proton in the atomic nucleus, but different numbers of neutrons. While deuterium is readily available in seawater, tritium needs to be made or bred to have a steady supply to fuel a fusion device. So the partnership between Oak Ridge and Tokamak Energy will be focused on developing technology that can breed tritium in situ in a fusion reactor. US Secretary of State Jennifer N. Granham said, We were elated when the team at Livermore delivered the news that they have achieved fusion ignition, and we knew that was just the beginning. The companies and DOE scientists will build on advances from the national labs, with the entrepreneurial spirit of the private sector to advance our understanding of fusion. While Jim Pickles, Tokamak Energy's Head of Materials, said, Fusion promises to be a transformative global source of limitless clean energy. It's crucial that we test and develop the most resilient and suitable materials for the design of future power plants as early as possible. This new research using the Oak Ridge National Laboratory's world-class facilities will push our understanding forward as to the likely lifetime of materials under relevant operating conditions, as we work towards demonstrating grid-ready fusion power in the early 2030s. Two. Tokamak experiments provide unique data for validating spacecraft heat shield ablation models. Now on a different topic, an article from phys.org explains how fusion plasmas can be used to test components for spacecraft. You might be thinking what does a fusion plasma have to do with space travel? Well the key point here is that when a spacecraft re-enters Earth's atmosphere at very high speed, the gas in the atmosphere gets compressed and heated. The hot gas contains so much energy that atoms are ionised. In other words, the negatively charged electrons can escape from the positively charged ion cores, creating this soup of energetic charged particles called plasma. The atmospheric plasma ablates or burns off material from the spacecraft heat shield as it descends back to Earth. So if you want to do an experiment down here on solid ground to see what happens to the spacecraft materials when they're ablated, you can put samples inside a plasma fusion device. Researcher Jonathan Coburn from Sandia National Laboratory said, Plasma material interactions deal with what effects the ions and electrons from the plasma have on a material and vice versa. Magnetic confinement fusion devices use very strong magnetic fields to generate and then confine the plasma, and so all of these ions and electrons are interacting and producing fusion energy. Inevitably, you have exhaust from the plasma that ends up impacting the walls of your vessel. Sandia teamed up with researchers from General Atomics to test carbon heat shield materials at the D3D National Fusion Facility that will contribute to both space travel and the design of future plasma fusion devices. The hope was that using a fusion device for these experiments gets closer than other plasma sources to the conditions that the spacecraft heat shields experience during re-entry, allowing researchers to validate the computational models they use for the heat shield design. 
better models of the processes taking place will allow the team to make heat shields lighter and more compact without compromising on functionality, improving the design of future spacecraft. 3. UK fusion firm Tokamak signed superconducting tape agreement with Furukawa. You may remember that we reported at the end of last year on the announcement from Tokamak Energy that their next generation fusion plasma device, ST80HTS, will combine high temperature superconducting magnets with the spherical tokamak geometry. A tokamak is a type of fusion device that uses super strong magnets to hold the fusion fuel in a ring shape to reach the conditions needed for fusion reactions to happen, while the plasma in a spherical tokamak resembles more of a cord apple shape than the conventional ring donut shape used in larger machines such as the UK Atomic Energy Authority's jet tokamak. A couple of recent articles reported that Japan's Furukawa Electric will supply the high temperature superconducting tape that the ST80 HTS magnet coils will be manufactured from. Chris Kelsall, CEO of Tokamak Energy, said Building our next advanced prototype, ST80 HTS, is a key milestone in our mission to deliver commercial fusion as a clean, sustainable, low cost, and globally available energy source. Securing partnerships with leading global suppliers such as Furukawa Electric Group strengthens our capability to address the twin challenges of climate change and energy security. Keiichi Kobayashi, President and CEO of Furukawa Electric Company, said, Furukawa Electric Group has set out the vision towards 2030 as pursuing business to solve social agendas and to contribute to the development of sustainable energy solutions. The new form of fusion energy is core to such goals, and we expect that our superconductors will play key roles in our collaboration between Tokamak Energy and Furukawa Electric. 4. Chinese East Tokamak achieves improved plasma retention. Long-time viewers of Fusion News might remember us reporting back at the start of 2022 on a result from China's East Tokamak, where they maintained the plasma about four times hotter than the centre of the sun for 17 minutes, which is just over a thousand seconds. This was an exciting result because increasing how long a fusion plasma can be confined for at fusion relevant temperatures increases the chance of fusion reactions occurring and net energy gain being achieved. Now researchers from EAST have published more details about this milestone and the physics behind how the tokamak plasma behaved. Tokamak plasmas are put into different categories, for example L mode, H mode or I mode, based on certain parameters such as how steeply the density falls at the plasma boundary. This affects how efficiently and for how long energy can be held inside the plasma. The latest published results describe a super I mode that led to the astounding 1000 second pulse the East previously achieved. Characteristics of the super I mode include an absence of metal impurities accumulating in the core of the plasma, which reduces energy loss by emission of X-rays, and also reduced interaction between the plasma and the tokamak walls due to the absence of a common plasma instability which reduces plasma ablation of the internal walls. Members of the research team explained that Scientists were surprised to find that this new mode had significantly improved energy retention, so it was called the Super I mode. We were all excited about the record, that was for sure a milestone of our machine. The machine makes it possible to test ideas, observe physical phenomenon, then we analyse the data to know why. 5. Vancouver-based General Fusion achieves milestone in plan to build major UK test plant. Canadian company and Fusion Industry Association member General Fusion has received final permission from the local government in Oxfordshire, UK to build their magnetised target fusion demonstration plant due to begin construction later this year at the UK Atomic Energy Authority's main campus. In magnetised target fusion, Hydrogen plasma is injected into a rotating spherical liquid metal cavity that needs to be evenly compressed to heat the plasma to fusion relevant conditions. Last year we reported that General Fusion had achieved a plasma temperature of 100 million degrees Celsius, over six times hotter than the centre of the sun, using a huge array of steam powered pistons to uniformly compress this hydrogen plasma. They hope that their fusion demonstration plant will become fully operational by 2027. CEO of General Fusion, Greg Twinney said, the UK has been a long-standing leader in fusion energy development. We're thrilled to join the Cullum campus and the UK's fusion cluster and anticipate creating 60 long-term jobs at the site. While UK AEA CEO Professor Sir Ian Chapman said, the UK AEA welcomes this milestone as it aligns with our strategy to create clusters that accelerate innovation in fusion and related technologies and support public-private partnerships to thrive. It also builds upon our heritage of hosting major fusion facilities here at our Column campus. And now for the bonus items. 
The Financial Times released a 30-minute documentary about fusion energy, featuring Fusion Industry Association members, Commonwealth Fusion Systems and Tokamak Energy on their YouTube channel this week. It's well worth a watch if you want to hear world experts talking about progress on the path to commercialisation of fusion. There's also still lots of discussion in the news about the recent result of scientific breakeven achieved by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's National Ignition Facility in the US, including a piece from CBS's 60 Minutes and an interview with Kim Budel, the director of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And finally, there's a story in Nuclear Engineering International about how the recently publicised technical issues with the International Collaboration ITER, the International Thermonuclear Reactor, are being addressed. That's all for Fusion News this week. Please subscribe for more Fusion News and check out the links in the description below if you want further information. And don't forget you can also listen to Fusion News by subscribing to our podcast. Thanks for watching.